Welcome to the latest episode of Testable Faith. My name is Spuds Rana. I am a biochemist and a Christian apologist, and I work for an organization called Reasons to Believe. Uh, if you want to know more about Reasons to Believe, I invite you to our website, www.reasons.org. You can also follow us on social media, RTB underscore official. I'm joined in studio today by Dr. Steve Berchi, who is a chemist and a pharmaceutical scientist. And so welcome, Steve. Great to be here. And, and today we're going to talk a little bit about just the, the complexity of biochemical systems and how that complexity points to design. And this is a, a subject that's near and dear to my heart as a biochemist, but it's also the really the, the complexity and the design of biochemical systems that convinced me as a grad student that there had to be a creator, and that opened me up to hearing and responding to the gospel. And of course, as uh, somebody working in pharmaceuticals, you're working on developing compounds that are interacting with that complexity in order to affect disease states. So tell us maybe a little bit about uh, one of the projects you're working on, you worked on, and and how that that insight really impacted you in terms of your faith as a Christian. Yeah, Fuzz. When I was in grad school, uh, I did a fair amount of work in an area a fatty in, in studying fatty acid metabolism and fatty acid synthesis, and uh, we particularly were interested in a one fatty acid that's a 20 carbon fatty acid with four double bonds means it's polyunsaturated. And this compound I study is called arachidonic acid. It, uh, it has a myriad of effects that it can um, uh, do in the body. And it happens from a variety of enzymes acting on it to, to transform it into local hormones that, that is short lived local hormones at various parts of the body from this one compound. So there might be a, a, a a, an enzyme that leads to inflammation, and you might be familiar with aspirin. It mm -hmm. has what they call cyclooxygenase inhibitor, and it inhibits a particular pathway that leads to formation of prostaglandins that cause inflammation. When you shut that pathway down with aspirin, you shut down inflammation and it helps things heal faster. One side effect of that is that your stomach loses a protective prostaglandin, PGE2, and therefore it becomes more susceptible to acid irritation. Um, another, another pathway involves something called lipoxygenase, where it will take arachidonic acid and make hydroxy, a variety of hydroxy or hydroperoxy fatty acids that have different activities, one of which is leukotrienes, and they're involved in uh, uh, allerg allergic response. So there are leukotriene inhib inhibitors like Singular out there, on the out there on the market that help with allergies. There's also an enzyme that acts on arachidonic acid to make hydroxy um, acids, per, uh, fatty acids that have a variety of effects, one of which is known as leukotriene, where there are now three double bonds in the molecule. And the leukotrienes are involved in allergic responses for, um, uh, and, and their uh, leukotriene inhibitors are involved in uh, drugs like Singular that help with asthma and with allergic response. Um, you also have a, a pathway that leads to blood clotting, blood thinning, prostacycline, thromboxane, and actually a whole myriad more that I won't even mention, just to say that all of these things come from one molecule that gets cleaved off of a membrane and then can happen locally with all kinds of triggers to, to control it to a local effect to, a, to, to uh, control biological systems in what to me seems exquisite design. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, one of the things that, you know, ast astounds me to this very day, but that I really recognized as a grad student was not only the complexity, but there was an elegance, there's a sophistication, there's almost an ingenuity in, in terms of how these systems are designed. And so you, you're doing a great job of laying out the complexity, but as you're pointing out, there's so much intricacy in, in, in integration in these systems that's so precise, that's so exact, uh, that any little tweak creates disease conditions, right? Right, and it's it's how fast they are able to be formed, how long they stay around, how localized that effect is, and what are the triggers 
what what are the triggers to make that happen at a certain speed or to get rid of it once it's done its effect? It it's it looks ex- so exquisite that it's difficult for me to comprehend how that could happen, other than by an exquisite designer. Yeah, yeah, and you know I I would agree, and you know to me it's interesting too is that you know as you know disease states arise because things aren't quite exact or, you know, there's a just rightness to these pathways. So when that just rightness is lost, disease states result. And of course, we know that administering certain drugs can kind of correct, if you will, some of that loss of, of, of just rightness. But even then, when you're administering drugs, you still are creating a ripple effect that's very hard to control in spite of how hard people are working, you know, to, to, with the to do drug development to manipulate these pathways, right? And in the the level of um, investigation and thought and understanding that goes into designing these, we still see unexpected things and uh, unexpected side effects or expected side effects that are that are very tight, difficult to control, and require tight control by the the doctors that are trying to figure out how to ter- treat disease states suggesting again the the just rightness and the very fine control within these systems which are not just one reaction there are multiple reactions with feedback mechanisms yeah well i can remember being yeah uh, either uh, uh, a, a junior or senior as an undergraduate or just starting graduate school and a lot of this stuff about the prostaglandins in arachidonic acid pathways was being discovered then. Mm-hmm. It was the kind of the, the talk of the town. So if we talked about it in biochemistry class, but it was really being introduced as kind of a new area. And so here we are, gosh, almost 40 some years yeah. later, yeah. and you're telling me off camera that we're still learning about these these pathways, that we still have incomplete knowledge. Yeah. Uh, While the knowledge has expanded tremendously since I was in grad school in the 80s and you were as well, and and that's when the the heyday of arachidonic acid investigations were going on, there's still researchers actively uh, working in this area and discovering new intermediates and new products that are having new implications for the the functioning of biochemical systems. Uh, And it's it's uh, only pointing to, again, to even more exquisite design. Yeah, that's the thing that's interesting to me is that as we unpack more and more about our understanding of the cell's chemistry, it, it, the, yeah, the, the the evidence for design is is just getting deeper and deeper and, and more and more profound. Yeah, and, and for me, that discovery is just brings more awe and reverence for, for the God who designed this all because... It, it, it's unbelievably complex and sophisticated. And to, to be able to probe and discover something new like that brings me a thrill only more because I'm, I'm getting insight in not how God magically did it, how God actually did it in, in the physical world. I know he can be supernatural, but these are natural things that he created to work. And it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, you told me that you grew up in a, a Christian home and that you were a Christian, obviously, in grad school. Do you recall how you thought about this in terms of your faith? Or did you even think about this this work in terms of your faith? Um, I, for me, it made the, the, uh, the idea of naturalistic evolution very problematic because I could not imagine how um, natural random or any kind of even non-random events could lead to uh, all these feedback mechanisms and the sophisticated control. And I, I had some friends who really didn't care one way or the other. And then there was a couple that I knew that uh, really were antagonizing me about being a Christian and uh, how could I, couldn't I see the light. And um, I, I guess now I'd say I, I know the light. There is one light, the one true God. Yeah, yeah. Steve, thanks so much for uh, opening our eyes to even more of the complexity of the cell and how it points to a creator's handiwork. Uh, Thank you, too, for watching this episode of Testable Faith. If you want to know more about the work that Steve has done for us at Reasons to Believe, go to our website, reasons.org, and search Steve Berchi. And remember, until the next time, the more that we know about science, the more that we have reasons to believe.